it was another busy week for the earthquakes. As the quakes were in search of a road win with a trip to Southern California as they met Chivas, USA. And there were changes in the front office. And of course, we've got a visit to the kit man's corner. Catch all the highlights, interviews, and action coming up next. This is Quakes Insider. The Quakes made their first visit of the season to the Home Depot Center for a Chivas USA game. And the expansion team, playing in the home of the Los Angeles Galaxy, transformed the building into a soccer fiesta, and the Quakes were eager to crash the party. These two teams played to a 3-3 tie in their first meeting and wasted little time going forward on Sunday. Thiago Martins missing an opportunity for Chivas USA in the 10th minute. But the Quakes were strong throughout the first half, as Ronald Cerritos nearly scored in the 22nd and 39th minute. I think we, uh, we, we attacked very well, you know, I think we, we put things together, you know, combined well, um, back to front to uh, create some really good chances for ourselves. And, uh, once again, it came down to uh, not taking advantage of our chances, you know. Uh. Finally, the Quakes were able to break through just before halftime, with Alejandro Moreno getting free behind the defense to give San Jose the one nothing lead. forward you know got got the ball won the ball and the ball came to me and I saw Alejandro making a run across from from um that chipped it over you know I luckily went on his foot and um you know it was a great finish and it was a it was a vital one point look at this ball by Quinty Rosario you wouldn't see a ball by Zidane any better than that he puts it on an absolute oh, an old... the game picked up speed in the second half as Chivas USA had a shot deflect off the goal post just before, Mark Chung and the Quakes nearly extended their lead to 2 nothing in the 66th minute. He leaves it for Barrett. On Barrett gets clean. around the defender. Great he ball. crosses. And it turns the goal! Off the crossbar! Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a great chance. I mean, Mark's done well to get on the end of it. It's just, you know, it's a good header. It just hits the crossbar, you know? So, I mean, that's what we want when the ball's wide. I want Ronald and, and Mark Chung kind of sliding in from the back stick, so... Uh, you know, like I said, we created a bunch of chances today, and yeah, on a different day, we score more goals. It's just that, you know, some good goalkeeping and crossbars kept us out. The near miss would come back to hurt the Quakes, as Chivas USA even things in the 66th minute. It's a chance, and it breaks it. Go! But with time winding down, it appeared that Moreno and Dwayne De Rosario were able to pull out the three points for San Jose. Except for a controversial official's call. The flag is up! The flag is up! The flag came up on the far side. De Rosario had it in the back of the net. But Jose Carlo said no way. Ooh, it's very bad. No, what's wrong here? There's nothing wrong this so far. Oh, it's what a horrible very call. Close. Oh, what a bad call. He had a half a step behind the last defender. It's the ball and Moreno. And look at the torso. Oh, John. look at that. Here's the pass. The ball's clear. That's a level clear. Oh, my goodness. It's not even close, Ray. Well, it's tell not that even step. close. Jose Carlo. In the end, the Quakes were forced to walk away with yet another tie. And when the Quakes returned to San Jose on Monday, they received yet another surprise as President and General Manager Alexi Lawless stepped down from his position with San Jose to become the President and General Manager of the Metro Stars. We needed to bring somebody in that understood uh, the game, understood what it takes for the Metro Stars to be successful on the pitch, understood development, 
and understood community outreach and in particular the amateur soccer population and how to win them back. I can't think of a better person than Alexi Lawless. He's done a phenomenal job with us in San Jose, and although we're sorry to lose him in San Jose, clearly the biggest marketplace in the country, quite frankly the biggest marketplace in the world, requires somebody that has the unique respect, credibility, experience, knowledge, and most of all heart to go out there and demand out of the Metro Stars a championship tradition and a championship mentality. We're not happy with the results on the pitch over the last 10 years, and we have told Alexi he has complete control, and I will back him 100% for any and all decisions, changes, and direction he wants to go in going forward. I told Alexi we expect one thing out of him, win a championship, bring credibility back to this franchise, and make New York, New Jersey, and the Metro Stars a dominant team within Major League Soccer and in the international community. My one regret is, uh, and once again, with, with all due respect to the, to the wonderful organization that I'm going to, uh, is that I'm not able to bring uh, many of my staff, uh, many of my team, and a lot of the fans with me because uh, I have been exposed to an element of the game that as a player um, you're really kind of insulated to, uh, and with good reason because what you do on the field is so important. I believe that, that my time here has been well spent. It's been an incredible education and a perspective. Uh, I've made tremendous friends uh, within the soccer community, within the business community, um, and I'm going to miss them. Vice President of Business Development Kate McAllister now takes over for the Quakes on an interim basis. Yeah, you know, uh, I had a little talk with Alexi, and I told him I was going to miss him. You know, I, we had a very good working relationship. It was, it was a joy to work with him. Um, you know, we had a difficult off season, but I think uh, with patience and and uh, and, and, and agr an agreement on, on most on most issues, I think we put together a good team. And and you know, a, a, the players get a lot of credit. I think Alexi deserves a lot of credit on that. And, and I wish him luck. I wish he was staying around, but I, I did I did enjoy working with him. Now it's time for this week's injury report. Midfielder Brian Mullen remains out with a left avulsion fracture in his ankle. Brian Ching has been upgraded to doubtful this week with his right hamstring strain. And defender Eddie Robinson is doubtful after suffering a strained right groin in the Chivas USA game. Troy Dyack and Craig Weibel remain on the season-ending injured reserve list. Ching, who has missed five games so far with his injury, is attempting to get back to the Quakes as soon as possible. Uh, it feels good, you know. I mean, I don't think I'm ready to jump into a game yet, but, you know, we'll see how this week goes, and, you know, hopefully by the weekend uh, we'll make a decision then. But, you know, I think we're going to err on the side of caution, so, you know, who knows. Once again, it's time to enter into the kit man's corner. That special time where we get to go inside the head of the Earthquakes kit man, Malcolm Phillips. While in L.A., the kit man experienced his first true California earthquake when the club's hotel was shaken by a moderate quake on Sunday morning. Whoa. Everyone thought I'd just fallen out of bed. I think that's unkind because it would have been a bigger earthquake had, it, had I had fallen out of bed. Were you scared of being your first earthquake? No, it was awesome. Kit man like quakes. <laughs> the Kit man and several members of the Quake staff took in the Galaxy Real Salt Lake match on Saturday night before the Quakes played. Terrible game. Why? Because LA won. <laughs> game was so bad. What was the game experience like for you? Samson games, you go and get have a few beers before you go in. Then you have a few beers on the way out, but nah, nothing last night. It's boring. Mm. I'd, I'd um, peace. <laughs> Can't I like his fans? <laughs> Gotta see that. <laughs> the Earthquakes return home to action this Saturday, June 18th at 7 p.m when they host expansion team Real Salt Lake, as Salt Lake makes their first ever appearance at Spartan Stadium. Uh, you look at them, you look at their lineup, and obviously they stick out are Jason Christ and Clint Mathis. You know, very good. 
dangerous players in this league who can create uh, can create problems for any defense. You know, so those are, those are the those are the main ones. You know, also you know Dante Washington's come into the mix, and they do have danger from wide with Andy Williams and Chris Brown. So uh, you know they do have some names are are, are you, you look at are, are probably a bit more. Uh, uh, illustrious than others, but you have to look at them as a team. They do have danger. Quakes defender Ryan Cochran, a likely starter on Saturday in place of the injured Eddie Robinson, knows that Real Salt Lake has some dangerous attacking players. saw him play um, when they down there in LA when they played LA. Um, they're a good team. <laughs> they're a good team, and uh, you know they got some good forwards. So um, we're hoping to get a win. Um, you know, and hopefully set us back on the right track. Earthquake fans, make sure you are part of all the excitement this Saturday, June 18th, when Clint Mathis and Real Salt Lake come to Spartan Stadium for the first time ever at 7 p.m. Good seats are still available by visiting the Earthquakes ticket office, any Ticketmaster location, or logging on right here at sjearthquakes.com or by calling 408-998-TIXS. That's it for this edition of Quakes. Inside.